Hello and welcome. This is part two of a video series where we take a dive into MoTeC and understanding card telemetry in a set of Corsa. In the last video, we talked about downloading MoTeC, setting up MoTeC, setting up ACC, validating that we have some telemetry files, and finally bringing data into MoTeC itself. In this video, we're going to start to look at some of the data and use it to understand a couple of mistakes I made on a lap. We're also going to go through how you can customize a couple of views yourself and just some of the basic information that the ACC workspace has by default. So now that we have some data in MoTeC, we can start to analyze almost just about anything we want to look at here. ACC does a great job of recording lots of channels and MoTeC is a very powerful tool where you can derive information from things that aren't necessarily recorded. So this is a lap I did at Imola the other day and you can see I have it says 38 laps. This is actually two sessions worth of data. It does not make a new file when you don't leave the track after a race. So this is actually two sessions. But anyway, it will show you the fastest lap highlighted here in orange. If you want to select a different lap, you can just click whatever lap you want. And you can see all these graphs are changing here. So if we want to look at the fastest lap and compare that to, say, something slower, like in this case, let's check out the previous lap. This middle column, the squares here, you can click one of these and it'll bring up another sort of line here. The white line is the second lap you selected. So in this case, it'd be lap 13. If I wanted to change that to lap 17, I could clip 17 or 24, whatever lap I wanted. Let's just pick something close, see if I have like a low 147 here, 147.5. And we can start to see the differences in these laps. One cool feature of MoTeC is that these are lined up relatively well. However, yours may look like it's not lined up at all. It may look a little bit more like this, or I can even probably give a larger example if I do something like this, where it's hard to, like how you can't even really compare these in this view. And that's because this was a terrible lap where I crashed. And right now, this see this little red square down here? It's showing this lap based on the time versus where I was on the track. So it's hard to, it just is hard to compare that way. So you may find some luck comparing laps. If you push F9, that's a shortcut to change whether it's sort of stacked by time or by distance. Even if you have one lap selected, this will change a couple things. For example, it's on distance now. If we do it to time, it just sort of moves things around a little bit. But now we can sort of start to compare the differences in these laps. So on this lap, besides crashing in turns one, two, and three, I went super wide into turn 14. Um, I know it's probably hard to tell in the data, but I'll show a clip of what happened on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. Let's dive into what potentially went wrong one of the first things we can look at that i was curious about is did i break too late or not enough i found a problem with my brake pedal and my throttle actually that was doing some weird stuff with inputs but anyway so if we want to zoom in it's kind of hard to see like this looks like i bear like my brake marker is basically exactly the same it's not but you know, it's close and it's hard to tell if I hit the brake late or something like that. So we should probably zoom in more to see what actually happened. And to do that, if we just double click anywhere on any one of these graphs, it'll bring up a white thing with your mouse. And then you can just click again and it will zoom in onto this area here. And you can do that as far as you want. If you want to get back to your normal view, you can just push W and it'll take you back to the lap like the default view so let's zoom in on this uh sort of last corners here and dive in and see what happened so here we can see my speed my rpm the gear i was in my brake percentage and my throttle percentage my first thought was i wasn't braking enough but 
looking at these graphs down here, you can see on the left up here in this area what my break percentage is, which is 100%, right? So I, it's not a matter of me not pushing the break hard enough. According to this, it looks like I broke a little later than I should have. So here, the purple line is my fastest lap. And you can see down here where this yellow marker is, this distance will change. So I, I started to hit the brake on my fastest lap around 384, 385 meters into the track. And on the lap that I went off, I didn't start braking until almost, you know, 4,000 meters. So I did brake about 15 meters later here. And, you know, you can see that sort of in all the graphs. So 15 meters later, I shifted later. Again, this white line here. My speed was hotter going into the corner throughout the entire corner. My downshifts were different. I got off the throttle later. So everything was just later going into this, you know, turn 14 or 13. So we can look at a couple other views here just for other data points to see, was it really a matter of just braking later? And one of the views that we can look at is in this driver tab up the top here. By default, there's this steering angle, and that's a measurement of how far you're turning the wheel. So you could see that, you know, as I'm breaking into the corner, I'm turning the wheel more and more. And on my purple line here, I'm releasing the brake as I'm turning the wheel, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to maximize the grip of the car. So as I turn the wheel, the, you know, this red line here, the higher this line gets, the lower this purple line right here gets. On the lap where I went in way too hot, you can see that I didn't let off the brake and I continued to turn the wheel, which causes the wheels to lock up in the car and your braking force sort of just suffers. There's one more view that I can show you to confirm that, and that's going to be in this wheel speed tab up here. So this is zoomed in on the same section. We're coming into the same corner. Again, throttle and brake is down here. It's all sort of mashed into one graph. But if you look closely, you can see it. But as I turn the wheel on my lap where I went in hot, my, what is this? One of these wheels dipped. It is a uh, wheel speed LF, which is wheel speed left front wheel. So I'm not letting off the brake and I'm turning the wheel to the point right here where the wheel decides, hey, I'm going to lock up and you're not going to stop anymore and we're just going to keep going. So this is a lock up here. We can look at the wheel speed, just dip, and then we're sort of in the gravel and then we get back on track and everything's more or less okay. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully you now have a better understanding and can start to look into, you know, mistakes you have made and, you know, improve yourself a little bit. Some of you may be wondering about this track map over here. I will go over that in the next video. It moves your car around when you drag the slider just so it's easier to know what corner you're looking at. That also dictates these things up at the top that say what turn you're in. But like I said, I'll go over that in the next video. Leave any questions you might have in the comments below. And thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.